here. I see this conversation circle on feminist action for climate justice. You're in the right place to have your voice heard and to discuss some of the most pressing challenges for our species, especially the female members or those of us who identify as female in our species that we're currently pressed with today. I'd like to give a huge thank you to the organizers of the NGO forum of CSW 65 and a huge shout out to Devin and Hori, two of the key organizers in this effort. In our time this afternoon, we're going to do some introductory work, set some context, then lift up some resources to frame our sharing but the most important part is for a good 30 minutes, we're going to be in breakout rooms for each of you to share your voice and be listening to each other. We have people here from all around the world, which is a wonderful opportunity. Then we're going to share about some of what came up in breakout rooms, come back together and focus on next steps and look ahead to generation equality. By way of introduction, just my, my co-host and I will introduce ourselves and a few other members of our team, and then we'll start, start sharing some great resources with you. Once again, my name is Beth Blissman. I am the UN representative for the US-based Loretto community. I'm coming to you today from the unceded lands of the Erie peoples in Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm deeply grateful to be co-facilitating with my new friend, Jian, who's going to talk to us about how land acknowledgement is done in Australia. Jian, turn it over to you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jian, and I'm an IBVM youth advocate in Sydney, Australia. I am a university student. And in Australia, as well as is practice in some other countries, we like to acknowledge the Indigenous unceded land that we are on as a way of acknowledging past colonial injustices. So with that, I would like to begin by acknowledging the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional owners of the country on which I'm meeting with you from today, and recognize their continuing tradition to land, waters and culture. I acknowledge that the sovereignty to the land has never been ceded. I also pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and extend this respect to any indigenous peoples present here today. I also welcome you all to type your acknowledgements or where you're from in the chat, as it is a global conversation circle taking place on indigenous lands all over the world. Thank you all for acknowledging the lands that you're coming from and for showing the lands that we're in an interrelationship with. I see in the chat, we have Kansas City and we have some names. We have South Africa and Connecticut. Yes, please feel free to keep on typing where you're from in the chat. I think that it's really conducive to show how international this conversation and this issue is. So now it's time to review some of the ground rules that we'll be having and some safety guidelines. And for that, I'm gonna be turning over to Janet, if you'd like to begin. Good morning, good afternoon to everyone. Even good evening. I am Janet Palafox, the NGO representative to the United Nations of the Institute of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I join you from Gurungai country in Sydney, Australia. I too pay my respects and gratitude to elders past and present and to all Aboriginal and Indigenous people living on this land. We are expecting over 250 of us to be here today. So our hope is that all of you will have a positive and enriching experience in this conversation circle. Let us keep this a safe place for all participants to share their views and opinions. I would like to remind you of some of the guidelines and principles that NGO CSW New York has for the forum to ensure that we have a safe environment founded on respect and inclusivity. Let us use welcoming and inclusive language at all times and commit to open dialogue and transparency. Remember that we are here 
because we are committed to advancing gender equality, feminism, and women's rights. Let us build a culture of excellence, compassion, integrity, and honesty. Respect one another, listen actively without interrupting and avoid assumptions. Critique ideas, not people. Enable different opinions, build people's ideas up rather than knocking them down and refrain from personal attacks. We can all agree to disagree and remain respectful. Allow everyone the chance to speak. Don't dominate the conversation and honor time limits. Let us all respect our diversity, diversity of languages, opinions, and expertise, while acknowledging that in our society at the moment, sexism, racism, classism, heterosexism, transphobia, global North domination and other institutionalized forms of oppression exist. We are accountable to each other. This is a space where the voices of the marginalized are amplified and given expert priority when recounting their own experiences. Their experiences of, of oppression are not up for debate or to be refuted in any way. This is also an anti-racist space, meaning that we welcome, value, and revere an intersectional approach to feminism. We all have different experiences. An anti-racist space requires that all of us need to consider our positionality and work actively not to replicate white patriarchal structure including subjugating voices of black women and women of color and other marginalized groups. We will not tolerate harassment of any kind, including offensive comments, intimidation, and sustained disruption of discussion. If you have experienced any form of harassment or encountered a hostile online environment in this conversation, please report the experience to virtual safety at ngocsw.org or to any one of us co-hosts in this um, event. Thank you and I now hand you back to Beth who will provide a brief overview of a much larger, larger conversation. Thank you. Beth. Thank you. Thank you so much, Janet. And welcome everyone. I see that people are still coming in from the waiting room. We're so grateful you're here. Once again, my name is Beth Glissman. I'm the NGO representative for the Loretto community. And we're here <clears throat> at the CSW 65 Conversation Circle on Feminist Action for Climate Justice. And for those of you who might be new to the CSW space, it stands for the Commission on the Status of Women. This is the 65th one that has ever happened. In fact, if you are new, or even if you're not, feel free to put into chat whether or not this is your first CSW or your fifth or your 10th. And I'm curious to see if we have anyone who may have even been at Beijing in 1995, 26 years ago. The Commission on the Status of Women is a commission of 46 countries, and different countries are chosen for it and serve on four-year terms. And they have a mandate to prepare recommendations that can shape global standards on women's rights and political, economic, civil, social, and educational fields, and ecological sanity in many ways, whether or not women have access to clean air clean water, viable food. CSW also exists to document the reality of women's lives throughout the world. And we'll have time in the conversation circle today when we do the breakout rooms to hear about what's happening on the ground. CSW monitors and reviews progress and problems in the implementation of the Beijing Declaration and the Beijing Platform for Action. 
which 25 years on is still the most progressive policy document we have globally for the rights of women and girls. Some things have moved forward in great ways in the past quarter of a century, but we still have a very long way to go. And we're so grateful you're here to help with that conversation and moving things forward. Finally, the Commission on the Status of Women also is charged with ensuring that the UN system itself is, is compliant with the highest standards for gender equality and that the UN itself through its own activities, reports, et cetera, gives due to women and gender analysis. So we're part of that larger conversation. We're one of 10 conversation circles occurring this year during the non-governmental organization forum of the Commission on the Status of Women. And in fact, if we could go to the next slide, Devin, um, in our particular topic, feminist action, for climate justice. Here are just a few of the linkages of what women and girls experience all around the world. For example, in the lower right displacement, we actually have data that documents that forced migration is actually something that exacerbates girls' vulnerability in the world. I know of many women, even here in the United States of America, where I'm based, who are dealing with water scarcity in the country that calls itself the preeminent doc democracy globally, and we still have issues of water scarcity. It's a challenging time, but crop failures, fuel shortage, conflict, disease, natural disaster, all of these are situations in which girls and women are more vulnerable. And as we tell those stories and work to get more women's voices into the fray, because of course this year, the main theme of CSW is women's participation and political action and involvement, as well as ending violence against women and girls. We need to be telling the stories, documenting the data, disaggregating the data. There's lots that needs to be done. Fortunately, after this year's Commission on the Status of Women, we'll be moving into what's called the Generation Equality Forum. And that's the next slide, Devin. If we could just briefly post that up, we will come back and talk more about what generation equality is towards the end of our time together today and how one can get involved in generation equality and the different action coalitions that are emerging. But please know that this is part of a much larger context and this is but one conversation <clears throat> among many. So there will be time for your voice today and there will be time to continue contributing your voice after this. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to my friend, Pamela Morgan, who's going to talk to us about a wonderful new and totally free resource that will be helpful to you as we have these conversations. Pamela, the floor is yours. Pamela, you're muted. Sorry. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Beth. I am pleased to be able to share with you today the Women's Human Rights Teaching, Learning, and Advocacy Resource, referred to as WITLAR, an academic tool promoting equality through education, advocacy, and action. First, I would like to speak for a bit about the Feminist Women's Movement Action Plan, or FWMAP, as we most often refer to it. FWMAP is driven by the perspective of local activists to define a transformative agenda that calls for profound structural changes in all spheres, political, economic, social, and cultural, and as a counter move to the political backlash and organized attempts 
to roll back women's human rights. The aim is to create a series of global dialogues, taking a multidisciplinary and cross-cutting approach to a range of issues that are relevant to women's lives. These dialogues aim to explore and define the profound structural changes that are needed for the realization of women's rights as human rights, keeping in mind that this will also require holding the international community, governments, and local authorities to account. So now we're going to talk about the Whitlar Initiative, which was formed in 2020 by a group of volunteers from civil society, higher education, and they were working together with FWMAP to prepare curricula to support the CSW 65 and Generation Equality Forum. The result is this collection of resources that are adaptable across context to help educators, community organizers, and self-motivated learners gain insight on the greatest challenges to creating an equitable and flourishing society. The Women's Human Rights Teaching and Advocacy Resource was created by a group of 50 academics who spent six months working in teams developing 42 teaching modules. And it was intense. Each theme is comprised of an overview module and up to 10 subtopic modules that address the key components of the theme. The modules follow a standard easy to follow format that is designed to engage and educate leaders and learners while assisting instructors by adhering to academic standards. This is a collection of resources, activities, and guidance that explores issues that affect the lives of women and girls around the world. It was developed because we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We need to understand existing international women's human rights mechanisms and ground claims to women's human rights and legally binding obligations and political commitments so that there can be an effective bottom-up movement to change women's lives for the better. This is a working document that makes the Human Rights Declaration, Beijing Platform for Action, CEDAW, and the SDGs, the cornerstones of women's rights applicable and accessible to educators and advocates. It's a valuable resource for generation equality forums, for Beijing Plus 25 university presidents, faculty, administrators, students, and youth movements, civil society, and researchers. It's for everyone. It's going to make a difference by breaking silos and providing online access to a working document about women's human rights that is grounded and globally recognized precedents for women's human rights studies, public health experts, environmentalists, future business administrators, journalists, school administrators, mayors and city council, women and youth groups, media, and cultural innovators. The compendium contains learning modules for each of the following six thematic areas. Inclusive development, shared prosperity, and decent work. Poverty, eradication, social protection, and social services. Freedom from violence, stigma, and stereotypes. Participation, accountability, and gender responsive institutions, peaceful and inclusive societies, and the last, environmental conservation, protection, and rehabilitation. The learning modules are structured to facilitate the teaching and learning process as follows. In each module, you'll find an introduction, learning outcomes, preparation, key terms and definitions, key documents, and instructional options, which may include suggested activities as lecture, read and discuss case studies, etc. Additional references, resources, which are often uh, bibliographies of relevant text are also included. This compendium gives the instructional leader a toolkit that is similar to that found in a standard lesson plan. 
It's really like instant soup where you only have to add the water, where in this case, the instructor is the water. Devin, next slide, please. Our focus today is on the last module, Environmental Conservation Protection and Rehabilitation, which has six subtopics. Subtopic number one, environment, women as environmental defenders, which includes key conventions and agreements and a case study and interactive exercises that will help the learner to fully understand the concept of women as environmental defenders. Subtopic two, food systems, looks at the effects on women and girls and it provides a historical and somewhat scientific context for the study of food systems. It offers two case studies as well as a host of additional resources and a plan for action. Subtopic three, climate change and sexual and reproductive health and rights. And as the title implies, it examines the intersection of climate change and the effects on sexual and reproductive health, looking at issues caused by the lack of access due to climate-induced calamities. Additionally, they highlight the interconnection of environment and reproductive justice, highlighting the, the relationship between climate change and sexual and reproductive health through a social justice and human rights-based framework with a guided discussion and other resources. Subtopic four, women, climate, and nuclear disarmament. And this one I think is the most novel and it, it actually deals with how climate change can cause conflict with potentially devastating outcomes. Suggested methodology includes lecture, case studies, and class suggestions. Environment subtopic number five, into environmental justice, deals with the way that women are forced to deal with a toxic environment that modern industry has created and they use video and innovative research options. This sub subtopic offers a list of women, including Dr. Wangari Matai and her Green Belt Movement, and Winona LaDuc, who are recognized for their work in environmental justice, and a reference to the feminist Green New Deal as well. And our sixth topic, the effects of climate-induced migration on women and girls provides a thorough examination of the, intersection, of the intersectional understanding of climate-induced migration and women and girls in the context of issues like racism, sexism, classism, poverty, et cetera. The rise of girl activists in this area is also covered. This, the subtopic offers a rich assortment of innovative activities to enhance, to enhance the instructional plan. Again, you'll find that CEDAW, the SDGs, the Paris Climate Agreement, the Kyoto Protocol, and other human rights conventions and treaties are referenced throughout the six models as, as the basis for this area of study. We invite you to fully use this compendium as a reach resource to enhance your discussions regarding women and the climate crisis. Now, while this compendium is important and offers information and in ways to reach various learning styles, we invite you to add your content, your case studies, your research infographics and other data to this compendium in order to make it a resource that is even more responsive to the needs of women globally. I'll now turn the floor over to Jean to give an intergenerational perspective on the Whitlaw from a college student's perspective. Thank you. Thank you for that. And further, hello and good morning to everyone else who has joined the call since. I have found so far that from the Whitlaw resource that it promotes greater equality and feminist actions for climate justice. Um, and it really does explore the importance of advocacy in this area. I think that it could be used from a college perspective 
as something that's very important to grassroots movements to improve awareness and make the type of tangible change in women's lives that really only come from broader societal understanding and education. As a young person and someone who's not actively involved in the world of the UN and NGOs, I often struggle to educate myself on issues that are not taught commonly within schools. As, as an example, I'm sure that not many of us were directly taught the critical link between our context of the health of the earth and the rights and equality of women. To be able to truly act as an environmental defender and to protect women, I feel that we need to have the greater understanding that I think that this resource genuinely provides. Uh, it provides an unprecedented access to a working reliable document about the climate crisis uh, in the context of it being an aspect of the world today that disparatively affects women. And I think that it's grounding in women's rights studies, particularly the case studies, are very pertinent in providing real world examples to young people of why we need action. Um, having accessible styles of writing that are not academic journals, but still uh, breaking down reliable facts and information is absolutely critical especially to encouraging greater involvement of young people in the types of movements that we're starting to get into and really need. This effort to connect these UN documents and movements related to the rights of girls and women within the context of the environment is coming at exactly when we need it. It's a time of great change right now. And especially during the pandemic, we've noticed that we need to be able to independently learn and independently access these kind of resources for self-education. Uh, it's also helpful to be able to move at your own pace and to work through this heavy information. And therefore, I really encourage all the participants of this conversation circle to share this resource with their networks, uh, especially because it is a US-based resource and we could really broaden it with perspectives from all around the world with all of your different case studies and examples and information bringing together all of those perspectives we've shown is what is absolutely critical to making a difference in this issue uh, and it really is a valuable resource for education and awareness that i've found so far and it's something that is very simple to share but can make a big difference if we just have the initiative to look through it to read to educate ourselves that's how we get tangible change and awareness within our society because we can then help to educate others. So with that in mind, I hope that you all do engage with it. And the next order of business from that will be to introduce our conversation circles for today and our breakout rooms. We will be having around eight, person, eight people per breakout room and we will be discussing the questions that are currently on the PowerPoint please do select someone to take notes. We hope that everyone from this will have an increased understanding of the issues that we're discussing today. Uh, and we hope that everyone will feel open to discuss the questions. Just as a bit of a starter, we do suggest that in your breakout room, you establish who is the youngest person in the room. And then we think that the youngest person should introduce themselves first and give their first thought on the case studies question. So no one feels too awkward. And if you are comfortable with it, we would like everyone to go around within your group and introduce your name and your pronouns if you're comfortable with that. So with that being said, let's get into the breakout rooms. Thank you, everyone.
just a reminder, you should have something popping up on your screen right now asking you to join the breakout room. Um, and I think you just have to click yes to join. If you accidentally press the wrong thing, feel free to stay here and we will get you reassigned. I have done that before. We have a few people who um, have not yet had an invite appear for them. Please be patient as Devin is working hard right now to get everyone into breakout rooms. We promise we will get you into a room and I'm hoping you'll be able to see the questions once you get into the room. If not, we'll try and put them up one by one. So thank you for your patience. with her menstrual cycle but still very very concerning to hear um we also discussed in places like the uk at the moment um the government have put forward plans for a coal mine in uh, cumbria in england uh, this is obviously very concerning for the uk so there's been a petition against this so we're hoping it doesn't go ahead uh, but i think pamela said maybe that could be something we put forward to the un agenda um and then another key thing was the, the energy treaty. So this treaty was signed by governments around the world about 30 years ago and to, in order to kind of promote energy. But it was for companies like oil, oil companies and coal mines. Um, and obviously we're now trying to go green, but what's stopping a lot of governments from going green is that the oil companies are now suing governments for trying to pull out of this deal uh, for billions of dollars um, and they're suing billions of dollars in, in taxpayers money so it's a it's a huge issue and that that petition has also had about a million people sign it but um, this is this is a global issue and it, it's stopping kind of green green initiatives in its tracks um, so another one that could be put forward as well Great, thank you very much for that sharing, Serena and everyone. And of course, there are many more points to be made and I see some are appearing in the chat box, which is excellent. Um, I think a good guide for all of us um, is always to just kind of consider in our organizing uh, to try to follow the model of nature as much as possible. Um, and certainly one lesson we can take from nature uh, is that there's tremendous strength in diversity um, and you want as many different viewpoints and contributors as you can get. So please, please, uh, if there's any facet of a point that's missing from our conversation so far, please do put it in the chat box uh, so that we can really put forward the, the richness of the full diversity of the community that's gathered in this circle today and bring that forward into our advocacy. Thanks. Thank you, Teresa. And I would urge people to not only put those comments, ideas, or snippets into the chat, but also into the Google document. You've seen the link appear several times in the chat. I'll ask Janet to put it up once more. That is a Google document where we are collecting all of the notes and references and links and ideas from your chat. 
and we'll be sharing that with UN Women as part of the larger effort. So we have two more things to wrap up with today. We're going to hear very quickly and, and briefly from the person who really made this women's human rights teaching, learning, and advocacy resource come together about some next steps for Wertlar and how you can contribute. And then we'll talk a bit more about Generation Equality Forum. But first, about Wertlar, I'm going to turn it over to the person who is a pro at herding cats, which is what we call herding bunches of academics and faculty folks and grassroots activists. Mm. No easy feat. So let's hear from Erica Higby. Thanks, Beth. That's hilarious. <laughs> and, and it's not far from, from the truth. But, um, you know, I, I helped to coordinate this amazing group of, of um, contributors to this, this amazing resource. Um, it, it did take us six months of a lot of work, and there were 50 people engaged, and it was a lot of fun. But um, I, I hope that you all take the opportunity. I just put the link there in the chat again to have a good look at that. I don't know about how your breakout sessions went, but ours was fantastic. And I heard about four new subtopics that we could develop to include just in the climate section alone. So some of these areas that you are experts in and are interested in um, would certainly be welcome as contributions. Uh, there's an email address um, very obviously put there in the, in the website. Um, so please reach out to us. We are vetting everything we put up and we're happy to help you through it. We're trying to follow a standardized sort of curriculum um, as you'll see when you look through it so that it's easily accessible to everyone, but we can certainly help you with that. We are grounding everything in UN um, precedent and, and globally accepted standards. So we can also help you with that. But like we were talking about disabilities in climate change and race and climate change and, and some very sort of nuanced and overlapping areas that would be really helpful. I mean, next, next year's CSW is focused on that topic. So I think the more we can develop and contribute to this particular module, the more it'll be used and, and the more outstanding of a resource we'll have for everyone. So um, that's my little spiel. I hope you'll take a look and get in touch. Thank you. Wonderful, Erica. Thank you so very much. Great. And Devin, if we could go to the next slide, please, we'll talk just a bit about the upcoming Generation Equality Forum. So what is the GEF, the Generation Equality Forum? It's been referred to as a landmark effort, a global inflection point for gender equality. It's a global gathering, or actually several virtual global gatherings, convened by UN Women and then co-sponsored by the countries, well, the governments of Mexico and France, because that's how things work at the UN. There's no magic source of funding for the United Nations other than the government member states themselves. So this is an effort hosted by the governments of Mexico and France. It kicks off in Mexico City next week, no rest for the weary here. So next week, the 29th, 30th, and 31st of March, and that will be followed by another meeting at the very end of June and beginning of July in Paris, France. These will be virtual meetings. You can still register, and I'm hoping there are folks putting the links right now into the chat about how you register for the Mexico gathering. Registration is open until Friday, the 26th of March. And the idea is to launch a series of concrete ambitions concrete, ambitious, and transformative actions, actually, to achieve immediate and, more importantly, irreversible progress towards gender equality. They're looking for organizations and individuals to make commitments, ambitious commitments, and for us all to work with and perhaps even pressure our governments to be enacting legislation that will give women, 50% of the population, uh, the same number of rights that men have. Oh, and perhaps even in the case of the US, the same amount of protection that corporations have. There are some changes that need to be made. So this is something that you can definitely take as your next step 
and we'd like to hear more about other next steps you might be interested in taking. We have a poll ready for you here, and I'm going to turn it over to Devin to wa walk us through that, that polling process. Okay, um, can everyone see the poll? Cool. Yes. yes. Um, so you can uh, submit more than one answer. Um, so you should be able to click multiple choices. Um, and then if you have anything that's not here, um, feel free to click other and share um, those ideas in the chat. There's no poll. The poll went away. Um, I got it back. Okay. <laughs> I can only see the CS, NGO CSW logo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't see it either. Hmm, I'm not sure. On my screen, um, on the top, because I'm on my handheld device, I noticed right on top there was a like a green line of text that said something like poll. So I had to click that, touch that, and then it actually opened oh, up the yeah. poll. I've just done that and I can see it now. Okay, oh, yeah. great. Yeah. Poll in progress in green at the top. Thank you for coaching each other on this new Thank technology you. for yes. some of us. This I've never been on brilliant. Zoom, not on like my computer, so I didn't realize it's different for those on yeah. um, iPads or mobile devices. You know, it's Kevin, funny. We, we it, talked a little bit about needing to make change for any of this to really come about. And what COVID has done is forced us, look at all the technology now that we never would have put our hands in before, that it kind of forced us into it. So instead of waiting for the climate to force us to make changes, we need to start doing it now so we don't have the problem. Because this learning much. curve has been huge. And yeah, I've had yeah. to learn like 10, di 10 different platforms. It's been really tough. Thank you, Nancy Butler, for your feedback. That is a key point, and we're all learning every day, and we're learning how to do new things in new ways. And you're right, now is the time for change and to get ourselves beyond our comfort zones of the daily, both in terms of technology and thinking about how we eat, what we wear, where our water comes from, mm -hmm. if we travel, how we travel, how we invest, if we invest, it's a time to rearrange all of our institutions all at once. I see we're at 91% uh, of the folks have now voted. So I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Devin, and ask anyone who's not Devin to please mute. Thank you. All right, so you should all see the results. Um, so we have 63% of people said they're going to get involved with Generation Equality Forum. 70% uh, said they're going to learn more about the work law resource. Um, 21 said they're going to contribute to the work law. 49% uh, said that they're going to advocate to member states and or community and business leaders. 66% said joining groups working on climate justice and 4% said other. Um, and I hope those 4% also shared their ideas in the chat because we all would love to hear them or read them. Um, yeah, great. Thank you so much, Devin. This is fabulous. And thank you for figuring out the poll thing for <laughs> us because I tell you, I could have never done this myself. But my knowledge is increasing. So as we get towards the end of our time here, we're almost at 5.30. I'm going to turn it over to my co-host, uh, Jan, for the last word.
Yeah, so I'd really love to thank everyone for attending this conversation circle. I think we've all definitely heard some great ideas and I really hope that this event was conducive to increasing our understanding of the way in which climate and the environment really does disparatively affect women. And as a conclusion, we'd like to end with this quote, which is that women will not simply be mainstreamed into the polluted stream. Women are changing the stream, making it clean and green and safe for all. Every gender, race, creed, sexual orientation, age, and ability. And I think this is a really important sentiment to end on and would also like to add that Mary Ward, the founder of Loretta Schools, once said that women in time to come will do much. And I would like to emphasize that that time is absolutely now. So with these Whitlaw resources and with everyone's stories that you've heard today, I really hope that we can all start to act and we can all start to really make change in the areas where it's most needed. So thank you everyone for attending and I hope you have a great rest of the day, rest of the week and participate in the Generation Equality events and the forum that's coming up.